The internet is full of surprises, and Corn Kid 64 is one of them. To me, this game just came out of nowhere. I was first introduced to this game from a YouTuber who goes by the name of Petronius. I was immediately pulled in by not only the title, but also the art in the thumbnail. And after watching the whole thing, I immediately logged on to Steam and purchased the game. And I was not disappointed. The game was created by a developer going by the name Bogosoft. On the surface, Bogos seems to be pretty new to the social media sphere, as they only joined Twitter back in September of last year and have around 1,400 followers at the time of this recording. But checking out their website, you'll discover that they've been making content online for decades, like going back as far as the mid to late 90s. And they've also been making games and comics for years too, some that you can actually download, play, and even read. I find all of this interesting because from what I can gather, Bogosoft just seems to be one person meaning that most of this entire game was just made by one guy, which is pretty impressive considering the final product. But anyway, let's talk about the actual game itself. Corn Kids follows the character of Sif, a developmentally crippled mutant goat, according to expert sources, who has been living in the same dream every night. With the help of his friend Alexis, the two work together to try and break him out of the dream world and return home. The story is pretty simple, but effective for the kind of game this is. It also helps that most of the characters here don't really take this whole situation too seriously. There is a lot of sarcasm and snide humor when it comes to the dialogue, which really adds to the game's charm. I always find myself smirking whenever a character will open their low-poly mouths. With the story out of the way, let's move on to the true star of the show, the gameplay. Corn Kids plays like a lot of the 3D platformers on the N64 and PS1. More so the former than the latter, think Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie. You run, jump, and platform through obstacles while solving puzzles, collecting MacGuffins, etc. But what makes Corn Kids special in my opinion is its movement and control. Let me explain. Sieve's main attack while in the air is his headbutt. It can cover some distance, has some homing properties, and you can even stick it to enemies like these birds and shoot them out like a cannon. But where this mechanic gets interesting is how you can combine it with wall climbing. Whenever Sieve jumps against the surface, you can do a wall climb where you can jump again to get some extra height. But, you can also headbutt yourself into the wall first, then do the wall climbing, which can give you more leverage. With that, there's also another technique where if you hit an object and hold the jump button on impact, you can gain more height. It's simple to understand, but it can be difficult to master. Which is what makes it so rewarding when you do get the hang of it, and is where this game starts to shine. Every level is designed like a playground, sometimes literally, or a jungle gym, which puts these abilities to use in many creative ways. It also helps that Sieve controls like a dream, something that I think is a must in 3D platformers. There was never really a moment where I felt cheated or that the game wasn't playing fair. The same thing can be said about the game's camera controls, something that 3D games can occasionally get wrong. The game gives you the option to have it either inverted or just act normally. You can move it around with the right stick or press one of the face buttons to center it behind you or slightly out and above. I tend to choose the latter. You can also hold down one of the back shoulder buttons to go into what I'm going to call 3 camera mode, in which Civ stands still and you can move the camera in 360 degrees. Also pro tip, you can also use this to get better aim when launching stuff like the bomb birds, which is very helpful for the boss of the Outworld. Just saying. While there were a few moments where depth perception did screw me over, I overall think the camera here works like a dream. Going back to the mechanics, throughout the game you'll find these doors with giant numbers. These are essentially level gates, and you won't be able to move past them unless you're at the correct level. And sometimes these do become mandatory to break to, in order to proceed. You can increase your level by finding these cubes littered throughout the stages. Some can just be standing out in the open, while others can be buried underground, found inside these chameleon mobs, in giant crystals, and these challenge mirrors where if you can beat them without losing, you'll get more experience. But if you fail, you'll be yeeted out of the state and you'll take some damage. Take too much damage, and you'll die. I actually like the experience gates, as it makes the player explore the levels and see what they have to offer. Speaking of the levels, Corn Kids has a grand total of four main worlds. A tutorial world, a big open-ended world, and two linear tower worlds, though I've only been able to play one of them. I don't know if it's referring to another tower world I haven't played yet. All of these worlds are extremely fun to play through. Yao World being a particular highlight, which isn't saying much as it's the only open-ended world and most players will be spending their time here. The map is surprisingly expansive than what first glances might tell you. You'll be doing a lot here, from helping this pig saint find his disco balls, to clearing out a sanitary zoo while not trying to die from asphyxiation, and even spinning the entire world around to play an audible version of Turkey in the Straw, which drives this Owl King guy mad. <laughs> I will admit that during my first playthrough of this game, I did get stuck in this world a few times. 
But what was funny was at the time, there weren't really any full walkthroughs of this game yet on YouTube. So I had to settle for a speedrun to get any idea of where I needed to go and what I needed to do. No offense to the speedrun or anything, this was just a funny circumstance. As advice for new players, just talk to Alexis whenever you see her, if you need some guidance on what to do or where to go. Lastly, I want to talk about unlockable abilities, as you can only get two in this game, both being found within the outworld. Those being the drill move and the portal warp. The former allows you to drill through dirt surfaces and walls, and the latter allows you to hold back the solar buttons to teleport you back to safe ground if you fall from too great a height. But, it comes at the cost of you taking damage, so it's not a complete get out of jail free card, and still requires you to be skillful so you don't end up in that situation. I think I talked about everything in terms of the gameplay, so let's dabble on the presentation for a little bit. To put it short and sweet, this game looks adorable. Taking obvious inspiration from free to collect the fonts of the late 90s like Banjo-Kazooie and Spyro, with its low poly visuals and squishy character animations. Which by the way, the character animation, especially on Sieve, is excellent. The way he does a little twirl when you jump a second time, or if you headbutt but land on the ground you can do a little roll, provides so much great visual feedback. The game actually gives you many graphical options, from being able to increase and decrease the anti-aliasing, the ability to have scan lines and different visual filters, and even having options for widescreen, full screen, and even 3D for VR. I personally prefer to keep the screen 4x3 in this game, just because it just feels instinctively right. I did try out full screen in my old update video, so if you want to see how it looks there, then just look there. The general art and character design here has a slight cute but unhinged nature to everything. Reminds me a lot of Invader Zim, especially when you look at the official art, like how characters' mouths basically almost consume their entire head, and also just the color palette too. As for the music, it's also really nice. An interesting factoid is that most of the music here isn't entirely original. They were created long before this game by other artists, and Bogo just used these tracks. But he did remix some of them and gave proper credit in the, well, credits. As this game has a really neat dynamic music feature where the music will change depending on the area. Busto Sada goes to the music that plays when you're inside the Big Owl's Tree, easily the best track in the game. Another honorable mention goes to the sound design, something that tends to be overlooked in media in my opinion. I love the little details like when Siv walks on concrete or hard surfaces you can hear the clopping of his hooves. There's also other sound effects I like, but I don't have much to say about them so I'll just play them now. If I were to put forward any sort of criticism towards this game, it would probably be that it ends pretty anticlimactically. You have this difficult, grueling climb to the top of a tower, only for the game to go like, oh by the way, the game is done, okay now, bye! Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit there. Like, I didn't feel ripped off or anything, but with the way this final area looks, I was just expecting like a boss fight, but no, it just ends here. Again, this is a short game. My second playthrough was clocked in around 3 hours. Also, I didn't go for 100%, which will probably add maybe like another hour to the total playtime. On the Steam page it says like the total playtime is like 4 to 8 hours, so I'm probably missing like a lot of stuff. Which for $6, I think that's the price. I don't think you can really go wrong with this. I remember buying it on sale for like $4.99. Corn Kids is a great game, but it also feels like a proof of concept in a sense. Like something that can be expanded upon in future iterations or updates. But this is just all speculation on my part, as at the time of recording, Bogosov hasn't really said anything on the socials to indicate this. But who knows, anything can happen. I still find this game's existence just interesting, and would love to know the process of how it was made. Maybe Bogosov will be down for an interview one day. Knock on wood. But overall, Corn Kids, it's good. It's really good. And go play it. 
Anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell to get notifications on when new videos are going to drop, and I'll see you in the next video.